Hey, good morning, guys. How are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. This morning, I'm just down on uh, the River Yare at Buckingham. It's a beautiful uh, stretch, it's all, all nice and free. There's no one else fishing here. It's just gone eight o'clock, so I'm bang on time. We didn't want to get down here too early today. But what my plan for today is to do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to go to so like an old school method, almost continental style method of big balling in. But I'm going to wait till the tide's right because it's flowing quite hard at the minute. It's going right to left. So it's ebbing out. I'm not going to go too far because obviously I'm going to ball it in and a bit of a fresher wind today, which we've not had for the last week or two, but it's right in my face. So I sort of picked about, okay, about 10, 10, 11, 12 metres, gentle overhand, I've clipped up. And then what I'll do is, I've set up two whips, a six metre and a seven metre. And I've also got a bolognese rod. So I'll talk you through the tackle. I'm going to start off with the Shakespeare 14 foot heavy feeder rod and that's teamed up with a Shakespeare Mac 2 XT 5000 reel that's got a 12 pound shock leader to 10 pound braid and I'm finding about two to two and a half ounces is holding I've just got one of the cameras and black cat feeders but I've left the bottom on but I left the take the top off so it comes out so I've got a bit of, bit of both wheels that's just free running there's a plastic stopper bead there and then one of the quick change buffer beads here and that's running down to a 3.2 pound Maxima hook length and a size 14 cameras and B520 on there I've also got my other rod it's ready to go, I've not put any feeders or weights on it. Here's my trusty old Daiwa Tornado Z Porky Pig. It's more like a medium to heavy feeder rod. It's 13 foot. It's slightly lighter. I've got 10 pound mono all the way through. And that is a Shakespeare Mac X2 XT 4000 reel on there. And again, that's just simply running down. I've got some buffer beads or some uh, ledger stops here. So I've got one above, so I can have it locked in or I can adjust the, the amount of run I've got, short or long. I've got a buffer bead below and then two more ledger stops. So I can adjust the hook length but I'm starting with a, probably about a two foot hook link. That's on a size 16 cameras and B520, so it's a little bit lighter. I've not set that up yet. I'll probably clip up in a minute. That's for when the flow eases off a little bit. I've got my Bolognese rod, which is my Zebco Trophy 17 foot Bolo rod. <clears throat> That's teamed up for Shakespeare Pro Carbon 4000 reel. And I've got a great big stick float on here. It's quite deep, it's probably with that 17 foot, so it's got to be about 15 foot deep. This line, I'm going to want to be fishing it probably about seven meters seven to eight meters i don't know if i'll be able to show you the float that's just running down to an old school peter drenham uh number four avon which is seven bb We've got four rubbers on there, so it's a nice big Avon float. I 
that's the three pound main line all the way down it's a 2.8 pound sil star hook length I've got a big bulk at the bottom of the main shot because I want it to get right down big bulk of number ones I've got a number four dropper and a number eight and that's running all the way down to a size 20 cameras and B512 which is the red hook I can see with this wind they're probably going to spend more time on the bolo than the whips I think I've got the six meter leader Arborello full carbon pole take apart or whip Again, I'm just going to be fishing sort of like if you can get it out of the reeds. Fishing about five meters with this one. It's quite light, but I've gone with. Uh, I think that's a one gram. Let me just double check. That's a one gram Drenon wire roach. That's just 2.8 pound main line. And I've got like a quite a heavy strung bulk. So the first shot is starting just below halfway I've got three number sixes three number sixes a number eight and a number eight stop that's uh, down to 2.3 pounds silstar hook length and a size 20 cameras and b520 on there so I want sort of like a nice steady fall in the bottom half of the water it's deep and then a seven meter whip I've gone for a stick float again bulk down I'll be running this over the same line just to see what presentation is best. <clears throat> and we've got an ultra big stick, 3BB. Again, it's 2.8 pound hook length. I've got a string of number uh, one shots, about two and a half foot above. Two number eight droppers and a 2.3 pound sil star hook link. And again, that is this is size 18. Can't remember the name of this. It's the Camazon blue hook, the caster hook, which I find brilliant. Really sharp, nice gape on it. Nice strong hooks, but fine. So it flows quite strong at the minute. So I'll probably start on the bolo. Or if I do start on the feeder, I'm just going to be feeding as I go, one cast at a time. But bait tray. I've got about a pint of hemp with a few tears in it. <clears throat> Air and water. About a pint and a half of casters. I've not actually even fed anything yet. I've just been busy setting up everything, getting my lines, plumbing the depth. I'm just going to the right slightly because there's a fair, fair toe on it in a minute.
We've got a pot of red and white maggots. With the flow at the minute being so strong, I'm not going to put any of them in because it'll just take the fish way down the way down the peg. Got loads and loads of worms. I haven't put any in the mix at all at the minute, but I've got loads of dendrobinas and red worms there. I've got some sweet corn, some tears, and then what I've done is I've just mixed all the ground bait up, and this is going to be ready. For when the flow eases up i'm not going to wait till it stops i'm going to wait till sort of like try and gauge it guess it to about 10 minutes or so before it stops or to try and get some fish in the area while it's still at slack tide i can get in there start mooching about and then it'll start beyond the flood going left to right so i've got four pints of ground bait here i made it a little bit more fish mealy today it's mainly in my green and brown breadcrumbs with a load of other bits and pieces you've seen the videos you check it out uh, but basically I've got loads of particles in here there's about a tin and a half of sweet corn there's a pint of dead reds which I froze down there's about half a pint of squats and a pint of fully soaked wetted uh, two mil pellets overnight so a great big and what I'm going to be doing is I'll probably mix up about 12 to 15 balls like that and I'll get them in as I say try and gauge it 10 to 15 minutes before slack water and then fish over the top of it with a bomb and just see if the uh, old school heavy boiling in method still works um we'll see um it used to do uh, years ago it used to come down and we used to be able to fish Bramerton woods end throughout the year but you can't now until october but um yeah you get down in the evening put like 20 25 cricket balls of ground bait in and fish over the top of it all night and used to get ton weights of, of bream and stuff but whether that's going to be a bit too gung-ho today We'll see. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of an experiment. I had loads of bait in the freezer. I thought I needed to clear out. It's a good way of doing it. And uh, see if it makes any difference to sort of like a little and often. Um, so yeah, change is as good as the rest. We'll have, we'll have a play about. We'll see if it works. If it does, it does. It's food for thought for next time. Uh, if not, if it makes it go a bit... I expect what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ball in 10... So, uh, 12 to 15 balls but I'm going to leave it I'm not going to fish on top of it I'll leave it for about 40 minutes 45 minutes um, let the fish start grazing get comfortable get confident and then I'll start putting a bomb over the top and in the meantime I'll probably be on the bolognese or the whips so that's the plan of attack for today <clears throat> I'll quickly uh, switch around and show you where my line and my feeder. On the side tray I've got plenty of corn, plenty of casters, loads of worms, two mils. I've got literally a few scabby maggots left which has started to turn. I've got loads of hemp and tares and there's a few meat in there. I've just used whatever we've got out of the freezer. So I've got a couple of pints of that. I'm loose feeding hemp, tares and casters on the five metre line. I've also got a four metre line rigged up. Let me just get this in. I'll talk you through the rigs. I might have to step up feeder in a minute because it looks like it's starting to trip. There's a fair bit of pull on it at the minute. And I've just basically put in sweet corn, casters and two mils through the feeder at the minute and I'll probably start putting a few chopped worm in because I've had a few nice roach on worm but I'll just quickly pan you around I've got some cow parsley 
on the far side. I'm going for the sort of the left, well, sorry, the right hand side of where those big bunches because it's flowing right to left at the minute. I'm trying to hit the clip. Just holding the rod high, watching it tip. Now it's settled. I'm just going to lower it down. Put it on the rest. And that's it. the rigs. The four meter whip, which is literally off the end of here, I've got a really fine strung out in the bottom sort of couple of foot, tiny number 10s. It's 0.8 pound hook link. It's a size 16 Camazon, that's the blue hook, the blue nipple hook, the caster hook. And that's running up to a. Can I read that? 0.5 of a gram Preston Roach. And I just want a really slow fall on that. Really slow fall. It's got a tiny number of shots just spaced out a couple of inches apart. And then we've got about eight inches. To the hook. The main five meter whip. I've got one and a half gram <clears throat> dread and float. I've got one number ten just on the hook link, which is again 0 0.8. I've got a tiny size 18 cameras and feed 520. I have got four number eight stops, but I've only left two down. There's three actually under the Olivet. There's a fair pull on that and now. And that's running all the way up. To a Dreden Trio, one and a half gram. You know what's going on this morning? See, we hook at everything. That many stalks and leaves and everything around here. So that's that rig for the five metre line. feeders just tripped. I'm going to step the lead up on that. See, seems to be a lot of weed coming down this morning. don't know if they've been cutting somewhere but there's loads of strands of weed floating. The Bonnerose rod is exactly the same as last week. That's with the 7BB Avon on there. I've got a big bulk of number ones, about three foot from the hook. One big number six dropper, and that's down to a size 18 cameras and B512. And I've also set up a We've got my leader 
Assassin 15 foot rod, stick float rod. That's 2.3 pound Maxima all the way through. Got size 18 cameras and B520. And that's a 5BB waggler on there. And I basically done a there's one number A and two number ones, uh, two BB sorry underneath, so it's about four BB. And the rest of the shot, a number of sixes, all spread out shirt and button button style, and then a one number eight. Just allowing a good drop. So I just want a gentle overcast, hit the clip. In front of me I've got on the far side there's two like cow pass with big stalks sticking up, which I'm aiming for. Just feeling the weight of the feeder, hit the clip. Well, then, how you doing? Yeah, not bad. You had much? I haven't even started yet, just literally uh, setting up. Alright, yeah. Just first cast, literally. Okay guys, little hook straight in my hand. Sharp hooks. There you go, there you are. There you are. Nice dumpy roach. First fish of the day. Been in five minutes. I just give it sort of like three, four minute casts. That was on just a little bit of worm, tip for red maggot. So I'll try that again. But I'm probably going to make this the last cast on the feeder. I'm going to pick the float up because I need to look at the state of the flow and I don't want to miss my window of opportunity. It just seems to be slowing down a little bit now. Gonna get a nice worm. Nick the head off, put that in the ground bait. And thread it up the line or up the hook, sorry. Dead maggot. I'm gonna go through the skinny tail end. Just like that. And just put a few casters. Pitch of agates. You top it with the ground bait, which has got, say, it's got plenty of two mils in it, loads of sweet corn, loads of dead maggots, squats. That first cast was a bit gung ho, it's just a very, very gentle lob. Hardly sort of force it at all, just very very gentle easy lob, as light as I can get it. That's better. I want to hit the clip but I don't want it to bounce back. And I have started feeding now quite quite regularly. Casters and hemp and tears.
just feeding the not even sort of like one o'clock ish just past twelve just with the flow just so I can try and get the fish in front of me if I can on the on the flow. That flow is definitely easy. I'm going to give this two or three minutes. I can, I can just see by the way the tip is. Pick the float up, and if the float is nearly up still, or just very gently flowing through, I'm going to start mixing the ground bait up. While I'm waiting, I'm just going to pick up. So I got down here this morning, and that was uh, the bolo rig, and the whips were belting through. Uh, it looks like it's. Let's see, there's no bait on, so. Yeah, it's still flowing. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Definitely eased up a little bit. Yeah, it's probably about half the flow it was morning. But it's still running nicely. That's just a nice steady trot through now. So what I'm going to do is give this a couple of more minutes. So wind it in. I'm going to start making the balls of ground bait up. I want it all ready for when it really eases up and it doesn't take long. Right, I'm gonna go mix the ground bait. Okay guys, you can see me. Got the ground bait all mixed. <clears throat> it's about 12 balls there. I've got loads more if I need it. I'm gonna stick with 12 to start with, just in case I need to top up later on. I'm just gonna quickly uh, cast my feeder into my clip to give me a good sort of visual reference of where I'm going to throw the balls. So as soon as the feeder goes in, I'll start bowling in. I've just got a bit of worm and red maggot on, or dead red maggot. Ever so gently lob this to the clip, watch where it lands, and then I get the brown bait in. Okay. 
Okay. Make up a few more. One more. Squeeze them as tight as you can get them. And keep that under there out of the sun. So I'm just going to give this about two minutes. Come off this line. Look at the clock. Bang on nine o'clock. And I'll start getting on the. Uh, Whip and bollow. Okay. Five past nine. I just fed 14 balls of ground bait on the feeder line. I'm going to leave that to settle for 40 minutes, 45 minutes probably. And just start on on the bollow. And I think I've timed that bob on really. It's really easy up now. I'll just show you where I'm running through. <clears throat> I just stepped up the feeder, put about it's about two and a half to three ounce feeder on. I just make up my own feeders and I've got loads of strips of lead. I buy all these roofing tile strips of lead, cut thin strips so I can put more on. Put the worm back on. A little skimmer. I just struck at that, they're only small bites, they're only little plucks with this flow. I'll take my feeder up so the bait is getting straight down to the bottom. That worm's good enough to go again. I'm just dogging the bottom of the feeder. Half a dozen grains of sweet corn. Pinch of mag uh, casters. And two mils. And I'm pressing that really tight. <clears throat> Sort of casting this further to the right now because there's a fair flow on it. You've got to be careful of this side wind so that your hook link doesn't go around your rod.
side wind's going left to right, so <clears throat> we have to swing the left, uh, the rod right to my left, just to make sure that hook link doesn't twizzle around the end of the pit. You see the line moving, I'm just letting the bow form naturally. in again. The only tiny little plucks. A small roach or something. Nice roach. I'm not putting worms for every cast, just every sort of like three, every third cast, put a few worms through. Fully soak the two mils. Covered them in water, <clears throat> left them overnight in the fridge. They're nice and soft. We'll get this out again. have to keep the rod high because of the high vegetation behind me.
I mean, already it's 100% better than the big balling in method. That just killed the swim completely. I had one roach all day long, it just, they just died. But this, just gentle, building the swim up, building the swim up. As I say, I put four feeder falls in, feed up feeders. Before I started, I got the line, <coughs> clipped up, put them in. Took that off, put the feeder on, hook length, just put the rod down. Left that for half an hour before I set up. Then set the rest of the gear up. Just give that line sort of half an hour, 45 minutes to settle. And I just now regulate it to four or five minute casts. And there's a bite straight away. And we're in again. Such a difference, such a massive difference. But as I say, it's a different line as well. That, that far side, just go as it starts to shelf up again. We're getting a bite of chuck. Right, let's get back in. Okay guys, feed has gone really slow. So I've sat that line off, there's so many boats. But what I'm doing now is, I'm on my five wheat, uh, meter line on the web, and I bought. Bolt all the shot down. We've got five number eights, a number ten dropper, and then the Olivet. All in the sort of like last two and a half foot. And again, it's a really big roach now. I've been feeding really hard nuggets laced with castor and hemp and tears for the last sort of like 45 minutes. A single castor on the hook, and we get some really good roach. under the water, just literally crawling it through. that bolt settle, dipping the tip under the water and just crawling it through as slow as I can, just holding it back hard.
taking the casting out really well. It's quite a small one that one this time. They're all good, much better stamp than the other day. Loose feed's not working because it's such a big tide today. It's got really, I was putting three ounces on, it's still not holding, it's bouncing out. I'm just trying to bury the caster deep in the hook. turning it so the hook's coming out the edge. But I thought the loose feed is just uh, going to drag them way out the swim. Because I've just been feeding casters, hemp and tares and nothing else. No maggots. It's sort of turned on to them. They're really taking these casters confidently. finicky bites which is straight under. in the bottom there. If I want to be a bit further out on the bolo, a little bit further out. That's a better cast. Flow's really starting to ease up.
Okay, I'm just uh, been having a play there. I was on the bolo, but it didn't seem right to me. The flow wasn't quite right. I don't know, the presentation not quite right. Like. So I picked up the uh, six metre whip. I'm going to play around, just getting a few very tentative bites. It's got a nice roach. I played around with a shot and pattern, <clears throat> keeping the bait going in. And I've literally gone back to an old school shirt button style. So I've got a number 10 stop, probably about 8 inches, another uh, 10 stop, number 8, number 8, number 8, and then 3 number 8s. Just want that very gentle, slow drop in the, that last two thirds. It's a single red maggot. Start to get a few bites now. I'm going to pick up the uh, seven meter whip in a minute because when I was on the bolo, the flow was going right to left, but on this six metre whip, on the inside, it's going left to right. So, I'll pick up oh, the bolo, the seven metre whip, and just have a look at the state of the tide. So I don't think it's turned yet. I'm going to give it another like, 15 minutes here and that should be a good sort of like 50 minutes since the ground bait's gone in. And then we'll pick up the feeder and see if there's anything moved over the ground bait. Quite a lot of boats today. We normally don't see that many on the this stretch of the year. That float's just running through ever so nice. Swinging it out. I'll show you around. Shots are just starting to take hold now. Flow starting to pick up, so it might have turned. So I'm just going to pick up the bolo again. Just double check. But the bites, the bites are very, very tentative today. Very, very tentative. It's quite odd. I normally just sail away or having it. Ever so gentle little plucks. Pick up this bolo and see what's going on. Again, just a single red maggot.
try to lose feed every cast. Yeah, it's turned. <clears throat> so now I'm running left to right. That was about bang on with the ground, mate. Put the ball in him. So I shan't give this very long, and then we'll get back on the feeder. And just see if it's made any difference. Taking an inch or two off each rig. At the minute, nothing seems to be really working. There's normally a live fish down here, a live with ropes and stuff. more cast with this they're going to try the seven meter whip with the stick I've been doing that much fishing and as I said I did sort all the stuff out but I've had stuff in my Shakespeare box, stuff in my rucksack, and I don't know where all my proper whip rigs are. They're not here. And they were in my box yesterday when I sorted it out. They're all to hand, five, six, seven metres to hand with Olivettes and that. But I was in such a rush yesterday when I got back from work. I had a sort of manager's course yesterday. I was on all day long time I got home, sort the gear out, sat down, it was nine, six o'clock, I had a couple of beers, no, that float's gone over itself, see that,
Let's just try the seven metre whip. Let's see if we can't make something stick. This is a sort of intermediate rig from the other two. But I might have just uh, do a shirt buttony style with this. Again, in the sort of like last two thirds. So I'm just spacing them out about six inches apart. We need to add some line on here. Just so I can swing it to hand. Because I'm not going to have much of a rump. I ain't got much line between the float and the tip. some line on to that. So what I'm going to do is get back on the feeder and see if there's anything to get over the ground. Okay guys, about quarter past ten. It's been very slow. I've had a, just went back on the whip, the five metre whip, six metre whip. It's had two or three little roaches just starting to come on the inside. I had a sort of three or four casts with the bob, not not a touch. I've just gone back on the put a feeder on. Had one little knock, but I missed it. <clears throat> so what I thought I'd do is I've just cast in again, and I put half a dozen sort of six, seven worms, chopped them all up, and put them through the feeder, and see if uh, chopped worms sort of brings a response. There's none in the initial mix, so I'm just going to see if uh, something's rattling away. Yeah, so you can see if chop worm brings any response. If so, I'll get a load, chop them all up, put it through my ground bait mix. But it's very, very quiet today. I've never known it like this. Never known it like this. Normally guaranteed roach a chuck on the whip and stuff. But Pierce severe. <clears throat> what I was thinking is, I'm still I'm giving it 
not too regular now, sort of like five, six minute casts. But I'm going to give it half an hour. And if nothing, then what I'll do is I'll boil up another half a dozen balls and get them wanged in. Just see if we can kickstart something. It might be the completely wrong approach. We'll only find out by the end of the day. Well, what I'll probably do is <clears throat> give it another half an hour on the feeder. If nothing materialises, say I'll get another six balls balled up and get them in. Then I'll probably only just <clears throat> I let it rest for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes max, and then get back on it and just see. I normally fish two thirds of the way across and always do quite well, but I put all my eggs in one basket. All, all my ground baits there, so I have to fish over that line. There's no point in me starting another line up. We're all in. I put all my cards on the table. So, which, on certain days, it can work, but a lot of days you blow out with it. And once it's in, it's in. And it does lend itself to a bit more evening, overnight, night session. But we come down for the day, it's just an experiment, we'll see if it works or not. And I've always got the whip and the bolo to fall back on. Oh, just had a nice roach on the whip. Starting to get regular bites now, so... with it being quite bright blue skies as well I don't think the bream are going to feed today but you never know down here some days they feed all the way through the afternoon just depends what mood they're in and where they are oh, I one just drop off I was just about thinking of changing the shot and pattern and bulking it down, but I've had three fish in a row. Fishing at the end of the six meters, I'm not going too far. A fair flow on it though at the minute. So what I was thinking is. <clears throat> I'll get off my box in a minute. Grab a couple of sort of ham, three or four handfuls of ground bait, and riddle it all off to get rid of any particles, any sweet corn and dead maggots. So I've just got the ground bait, and I can put some hemp and cassis through it and use that for down here because it's flowing quite hard. I haven't got much of a run before before I run out of. And there's a bite as well straight away. Coming a lot closer into hand now, so which is quite handy. And that wind's dropped as well at the minute. Look at 
little roach. Oh, we nearly made it out. <laughs> Right, let's crack on. Nice perch, come up and eat, eat the dace. Right, we're literally put this in about four meters. Seems to where the bites were coming from. I keep saying I'm going to come down here and do some jigging because there are massive perch in here. You get it all the time. I see it one day, I just saw all these bait fish run, and then there must have been a pack of about 50 perch, some really big ones, like a pack of raptors chasing them all. Up and down, up and down they were. Literally where I'm getting my bites now. Quite close in, there's a bite. Okay guys, <coughs> done what I said I was gonna do. Just put another six balls of ground bait on the feeder knife. Half a box. Good with ground bait food, passed it a couple of times. So now it's just plain ground bait, there's a couple of two mils in there. And all the rest of it is all here. Dead maggot, sweet corn squats. I'll just get that in a bit of water, stop it drying out. But what I'm going to do with this ground bait mix now is just casters and head on the inside line, see if I can get the fish down on the bottom a bit more. Feed just little tiny nuggets of ground bait. We go quite rich again, so loads of casters and hemp through there. What a squeeze. It's a little ball like that. We'll get that cast in. Or just chucked in, should I say? See if we can concentrate the fish down. But uh, the whip's working, and I just had a play around. I was getting quite a few nice little roach and stuff. <coughs> but I'll, I'll try bulking it down. I had half a dozen runs through with it bulked down, nothing. So I've gone back to a strung out pattern, but I really strung it out all the way through the rig. So it's 
literally about eight inches, number 10, eight inches, number 10. Again, all the way up the line, all the way up to the, to the float. So we've got the old school conventional strung out and it's just really working, which is quite strange. Because um, with it being so deep, and still quite a bit of a flow on it, but you'd think a bolt down rig would work a lot better, but it's not not getting the bites at all on a bolt down rig. You just seem to want it falling through naturally on the drop. This wind's awkward. It's always here, it's always in your face. boats today. Suppose it is holiday time. Kids are off. So hopefully by putting the ground bait in, I can get them a bit further up the, up the peg. In front of me a little bit more. that feed of it in a minute. I'm going to move it out of the way so I've got better to run through with the whip.
I think it's one of them venues, like anywhere. You gotta set your stall out from the beginning and try and make it work. Whether it be the whip, pole, waggler. Keep working at it and adapting it. I think it's sometimes when you come to a big river like this and so much water to go out and you've got the feeder and so many options you can get caught up scramble your brain start jumping around doing this that and the other and not making anything work so sometimes simplifying it finding out where you're getting a few bites and working it all out from there Since I've started introducing the loose food again, the bites are picking up again. So. The fish will always tell you. The fish will give you the answers. You've just got to read them. maggot, single white maggot.
Right, to crack on. Go straight in again, straight under. It's strange, just that, adding that extra section has just changed things. For what reason? I'm not sure at the minute, but as I say, it's just allowing me to get completely behind the float hold it a lot steadier, keep it running down the peg true. Casting up, drawing it back, letting those shots settle. Now I should switch you around. Finding it easier to cast out where I want to be without the section, just quickly putting the section on. Get right behind the float, keep the tip down, just hold it back slightly. Come up the peg a bit more. Yes, better rope. There's a nice roach now. Starting to get some decent roach. Size is a building.
swing and open to the adapt the chain because you might have one preconceived idea in your head and the mission can have a completely different idea and you've got to, you've got to be prepared to change it's not on your terms it's on their terms Try a double maggot, try a double white, and just see. See what the response is. I'm going to put them both with a skinny tail end. It's only a small size 20 hook. Hopefully, we give the wag we'll go for there. But what we're going to do today is we'll bring this in. I'm going to keep it to like three, four minute cast. Okay, yeah, it's pretty much all done. It's 12 o'clock. I packed all the gear away, but I'm just going to give it another half an hour. Oh, as you can see. On the whip, I just had a few more roach, and uh, I was just bringing a little roach in, and the tip flew over. There was a big heavy weight on. I thought it was a pike, but um, got it all the way to the top, and it was a huge perch. Must be around the three pound mark. It let go. I dropped it back in. It took it again. Uh, got the landing net. It was just about to put it in, and it spat it out. It's got a bit quiet since then, so I thought I'd pack everything away. This wind's getting really gnarly and it keeps blowing all the camera tripods, so... We've got a couple of dozen fish, some nice big perch. Nice roach. About 30 fish in total. So it's not bad, but two hours, two and a half hours on the whip to save a blank session. The feeder, no, not a touch today, one roach on the feeder. I think that big heavy balling in method just didn't work today, just didn't work at all. I went over there, put a worm and dead maggot on, that was just left to the side there. It was in over half an hour, come back, clean as a whistle. So it's probably killed that lime completely. So. Maybe they're not used to it, middle of the day, a lot of boats, so <clears throat> that's sacked off, you know. I won't be doing that again in the daytime, maybe for the nighttime session, yes, but for the day, no. So we've cleared our mind of that and just can go back to the usual sort of like three minute casts and build the peg up. But yeah, I'll get these back. Not a bad day. It has been, it's got a hell of a tide on it now, pushing, really hell of a tide. Uh, but it took a long while to get the fish going today in a very, very sort of particular bite. It's very, very delicate little bites. They not really had it. Um, the ground baits helped, balling it in and loose feeding over the top. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Tight lines, all the best guys. I'll see you again.